start with the Sefer Shemiras Hoshon. The topic today is do not get involved. Okay. And it says, above, um, above we discuss the seriousness of initiation, uh, initiating and pushing and pursuing strife. One must also be aware not to lend support to either party in a feud, lest uh, he suffer along with them uh, their time of retribution arrives. As the Mishnah states, uh, Scripture punishes an uh, accomplice to, uh, to the transgressors, like the transgressors themselves. So let's read it again and uh, try to understand. So there is a feud, let's say in some place, and uh, you have to like run away. Um, above is the, above uh, we discuss the series of initiating uh, and uh, pursuing strife. So initiating it's like uh, you, you're one of them, right? Here we like uh, they they try in, uh, in this case they try to pull you to one, one of the sides. One must also be aware not to lend support to either party in a feud, lest he suffer along with them with the. Uh, when their time retribution arrives. So, and uh, at, at the end, we, we have to understand it's, it does not matter where you were involved 100% and 3.5%. So, like in, in the eyes of Hashem, in the eyes of Heavenly Court, we were part of this feud, we were part of that, uh, of that side. It doesn't matter how much we were involved. Okay? As uh, Mishnah states, Scripture punishes the accomplice to the transgressor, like the tra transgressor themselves. So that's a very interesting statement. So, and how, how do you know? When when do we learn it? I should learn it every day. <laughs> right. So every day, uh, at least men, uh, Jewish men, we say uh, in um, in a song of the sea that is part of our Tuki de Zimra, and we said that uh, Hashem threw uh, the um, the, what is it? Uh, uh, the, the Egyptian with a horse uh, in into the sea. So what uh, what did horse do? Maybe uh, kill the Egyptians who tried to kill the Jews, but let the, the horse live. Like well, he poor animal, it was forced. No, it was part of the crime, so it was uh, punished. So it's very interesting. The Mishnah, the Medrash states, by Mid Baraba 18:3, take heed of the severity of strife. For when one is an accomplice to a strife, the Holy One, blessed be He, brings about His end. As it is written, regarding those who sided with Korah, a flame came forth from Hashem and consumed 250 men who were offering the incense. So it's part of, um, part of this uh, Korah's revolt, these uh, 250 people. They died, and uh, the, I mean, uh, just it, it was it was a uh, it was a uh, um, confrontation between Moshe and Korah. That's it. So, the, but these two hundred and fifty people decided to get involved, and Korah was punished, and they were punished. Very interesting. So, not not a good idea. It's from Bamidbar sixteen thirty five. Continue. The Talmud states, Rab said, problem with this dispute." Transgress the negative commandments as it is written, and he not be like Korah and his assembly. Okay. So that's actually one of the things that, that we have to remember every day, right? Not to be like Korah. Um, Rav Asi said, such a person is fit to be uh, afflicted with Tsaras. From Sanhedrin 110. A previous chapter we cited above the Sefer Hakane. Which says that at times God substitutes poverty for tsaras, thus placing the sinner in the mercy of the fellow man. So it's very, very interesting this uh, last idea, and we're going to explain a little. So when 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 person has tsaras, so basically he he cannot work, he cannot do anything. He has to go like uh, beyond the limits of the city and sit there, and uh, I don't know somebody would bring him food or something. So he's not allowed to, to, to leave that place. So it's, uh, of course, if he had a business or something, so it's, uh, that, that's it. He does not, no longer has a business. That's it. You, you understand? So he, he would slip into poverty. And uh, same, uh, same today. So Hashem does not have uh, this tsaras. Why, as we spoke before, why uh, there is no tsaras today? 
not not because of it's such a big tzaddikim, but uh, because there's no cure, there is no red cow, so that it is uh, impossible to to be purified from um, from tzaras. So Hashem sometimes substituted with poverty. So this uh, uh, being part of the feud, this uh, this uh, thing like be, be like being part of the confrontation or something, so people uh, people get uh, what can uh, can get uh, poor because of that. Very interesting. And it comes uh, not because of his bad financial decisions, but because of the tsaras. Okay, because uh, yeah, because it, it was substituted with tsaras. Tsaras was substituted by this part. Stop here. Okay. Any questions on what we said? Okay. Hold on. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, but I guess we would be allowed to get involved to make peace between people sometimes, right? No, no, uh, to, to make peace all the time. To make peace all the time. And uh, plus some... Um, I apologize. That uh, that's a very good question. Of course, the the topic is uh, is very big. So, but uh, in, in in some cases, when somebody is doing kill Hashem, somebody goes against the the Torah. So you must uh, so the, the, do a stand. You know, make a stand, and you have to fight, and you have to do every, everything uh, possible to to stop that person. That's uh, that's not included in this. Uh, what this strife is like. For no no practical reason, I mean, people just want to like uh, I don't know what want, want want some control, some some respect, some I don't know some uh, some things that uh, not, not relevant basically. You understand? So for for example, uh, in uh, in some shows, so I I don't like uh, some like uh, officials, but they're doing doing their job, you know. You understand that uh, uh, everything is working. Like, why would I like go like against him if I don't like him? Maybe I don't like this personality. But at the end of the day, he does uh, his job. Whatever. I mean, he's not being paid. He's not being nothing. But uh, uh, that's uh, that's just leave the things uh, the way they are. Don't um, don't rock the boat. Uh, 